webinar um, where we pick a topic and then do a presentation on that topic. And so uh, if anyone would like to attend a webinar like that, there's another one coming up on December 4th. And then um, also we have our first online Sakai bootcamp training event that starts December 16th and that goes for an entire month. Uh, so please feel free to check those out um, at the Brutus Partners website. So I'm going to uh, toggle over to uh, a web page that kind of shares with us uh, the different uh, LTI tools that are available that should be integratable with any learning management system that is supposed to be LTI compliant. And I'm not going to uh, scroll through this entire list, but as you can see from my computer screen, there's a whole heck of a lot of tools that um, are considered to be LTI compliant um, or LTI uh, producers or providers. So, um, so that's kind of cool, right? Uh, it would be really neat to uh, connect Sakai with whichever LTI tools you feel your institution is interested in using. Uh, and it is true, in fact, that that you can connect some of these tools uh, with Sakai. Um, but before we actually take a look at the tools, I'm going to just toggle back to the presentation and we'll uh, look at the next slide for just a second. Uh, there are a couple of different types of LTI tools, at least from uh, sort of my own functional perspective. Now, I'll share with you that I am not a developer and I don't write code, so I do not really know anything technical about the LTI spec. What I do know about is how the users, both instructors and students, experience their interactions with LTI tools. And so I've kind of been able to, at least from a functional perspective, from a user experience perspective, bunch these tools up into three different categories. Uh, so one category of LTI tool is uh, the type of LTI tool that works uh, both in Sakai and Canvas and probably all of the other LMSs out there. Uh, it's a tool that users click on to experience, and typically the user is um, taken into some sort of external tool through the LMS, and sometimes that's by clicking on a link uh, and opening a pop-up window. Sometimes it kind of behaves like a little iframe, um, but, but that's sort of one category. And I've included some examples of the types of tools that are in this category. Uh, so Piazza is one, Titan Pad's another. And uh, these are tools that, uh, for the most part, seem to integrate pretty well with Sakai. There's another set of uh, tools that seems to only integrate with Canvas and um, also Moodle and a couple of other LMSs, but um, I'm really I'm really seeing Canvas as as the Sakai's big competitor uh, for now and, and in the upcoming years, and so uh, it seems like there are a lot of tools that uh, can be added into Canvas that cannot be added into Sakai in a way that is user friendly. And so I am going to show you an example of what I mean in just a couple of minutes. Then the last category, uh, at least from a functional perspective, that I uh, kind of see is tools that do both of those things. Uh, so uh, you can see some examples of those at the bottom of the screen. I'm talking about tools like Atomic Learning, where uh, instructors can either create a link uh, to the atomic learning environment uh, so that students can use that environment to watch the videos or, or, or do the atomic learning tutorials or whatever. Um, but then also instructors can optionally select from uh, content that exists inside the atomic learning environment and cause that content to be embedded somewhere in Canvas. And uh, that that is another sort of capability that, um, as far as I can tell, Sakai doesn't do very nicely. So let's, um, let me show you what I'm talking about. So the first thing I'm going to show you is just the user experience when adding an LTI tool to a Canvas course. And then, then I'm going to show you the user experience uh, adding an LTI tool to a Sakai course. So I'm just going to toggle over to Canvas here, um, and you'll have to... Uh, Pardon my lack of knowledge about Canvas. I, <laughs> I am not as well skilled in Canvas as I am with Sakai, but uh, I think I'll manage to clunk around and add 
uh, an LTI tool to my Canvas site. So in Canvas, uh, I am in this course called Math 101, and I've just clicked on the settings for this course. So the settings option in Canvas is kind of like um, a worksite info or worksite yeah, I think it's called site site info or worksite info um, for most Sakai implementations. And there's an apps tab or an apps function in Canvas that actually shows you a list of all of the external apps that have been installed in this particular instance of Canvas. And of course, I'm using Canvas's demo site. And so, of course, they have installed and anything and everything that they possibly could into this demo site to make it look cool. And uh, indeed it does look cool because Canvas has also included the logos for all of the cool, interesting external tools that you can add to your Canvas course. So the tool that I wanna use and I'm gonna demo today is TitanPad. The reason I'm using that is because it is free and it is easy and I already know how to use it. Uh, so I didn't have to pay for anything here, I'm just going to click on Titan Pad, and I'm going to tell Canvas to add this tool to my course. So what happens next? Well, as you can see here in the left-hand navigation area, um, this left-hand navigation area in Canvas kind of looks kind of looks like Sakai's navigation, really, uh, but nothing appeared here. So there's actually another step that I have to go through in in order to add an LTI tool to Canvas, and that is to use the modules tool in Canvas, which is kind of like our uh, lesson builder tool. It's a tool that lets you organize your content and organize your pages and organize your entities. Uh, so if I click on this little plus sign here, I can choose to add an external tool to this uh, this course module. And so this, uh, this, this drop down box looks kind of familiar or looked kind of familiar to me because, uh, Lesson Builder in Sakai has, has something similar to this. Uh, it looks a little different, of course, because they're two different systems, but it works pretty well. So, uh, so I'm going to click Titan Pad. I'm going to add Titan Pad to my course. And now, uh, using this modules function in Canvas, I have given my students access to the Titan Pad tool. So that's the process for adding an LTI tool in Canvas. Next, I'm gonna show you what that process looks like in Sakai. So, um, and this, I'm, I'm actually using kind of a, uh, I'm using kind of a mix between Sakai uh, 2.9 and Sakai 10 in this environment. So the feature I'm about to show you, I think is only available as of Sakai 10. Uh, but here is how, at least in Sakai 10, a user would add an LTI tool to a course. So um, if you click on Site Editor and select Edit Tools, much like you were just going to add any regular old Sakai tool to your course, there is now a menu down at the bottom of the screen that is going to show you a list of all of the tools that have been installed in this particular Sakai environment. Environment. So uh, these tools didn't just appear on my Lesson Cloud site. I had to log in as an administrator, and I had to figure out how to, you know, set up the the LTI tools that you see listed here. And um, that action caused these tools to be available in every course. So the users or the instructors can select these tools for their course. So I select, of course, you know, we don't have pretty um, icons like Canvas does, but we do have a nice selectable list, which I think is something we didn't really have before in Sakai before Sakai 10. So I'll continue and continue and finish. And now in Sakai, my experience is that uh, the Titan Pad tool now appears in the left navigation area of my course. Now, if I wanted to be like uh, Canvas, I could certainly use Lesson Builder, uh, much like I use the modules functions in Canvas, to add an external tool using uh, using Lesson Builder as well. And so, if I if I actually followed through with this process, um, we can see that now my experience in, in Sakai looks kind of the same as, as my experience in Canvas. There's like a link to Titan Pad, and then the users can go to that link. And so that's in fact the uh, next. Uh, Next slide, I'm supposed to show you how the user actually accesses the, 
the LTI tool from within their course. So I'm going to go back to Canvas, and I'm not actually going to log out and log back in as a student. Uh, just in the interest of time, I'm going to um, have everybody pretend that I am now a student. Uh, so as a student, I can look at and view the modules that my instructor has made available to me. And as part of one of those modules, my instructor has offered me a way to link into a system called TitanPad. And so, as you can see, it immediately knows my name, and I'm able to start participating in this Titan Pad. Uh, I get a pretty similar experience when I try to access that LTI tool in Sakai. So I just create my little Titan Pad, and then Sakai pushes my little name into Titan Pad, so Titan Pad knows who I am. I don't have to introduce myself or anything like that. So that is the uh, experience that a user would have just using a, what I call like a, just a regular old LTI tool. <laughs> uh, that that's uh, the type of tool that I was talking about in my in my first example, uh, where the users have to click on the tool uh, in order to actually experience the LTI tool. And these LTI tools um, can do a lot more things than what I just showed you. I mean, some of them. Can and interact with uh, grading and rosters and things like that. I don't have anything that fancy to show you today, though, uh, because I feel like in this particular situation, Sakai pretty much works the same way as Canvas, and so I don't really see Canvas as having any sort of advantage in this case. Uh, there is a bit of an advantage in the next case where uh, the, there are a bunch of LTI tools that, you know, a lot of them were actually written by the Canvas folks that are used to embed content from those external tools inside of a Canvas course. So I'm going to go through that process uh, next. So let me just toggle over to Canvas again. I suppose I should probably check in um, with Matt and make sure you guys are still able to hear me. Uh, are you guys able to hear me and see my screen? I'm, I'm able to see you in here, uh, your screen. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm seeing like, a lot of yeses in the chat. Okay, cool. Yeah, these, uh, <laughs> yeah looks good. Yeah, I've had that situation before where I've talked for like five to seven minutes and then somebody's texted my cell phone to say, uh, we can't hear you anymore. So um, I will keep checking in for that. All right, so uh, here I am in Canvas. And now what I'm going to do is find a couple more LTI tools to add to my course. So, uh, and of course, the only LTI tools I'm demoing today are free ones because... I don't like paying for stuff if I don't have to. So there's this cute little tool called Quizlet uh, that users can use to, like, you know, check their skills in math uh, and various other subjects. And there is also a tool called Khan Academy that allows an instructor to quickly search for Khan Academy videos and then embed those videos onto a content page in their Canvas course. So I've just added these tools to my course um, as external apps. And now, as you can see again in Canvas, nothing has happened here in the left-hand navigation area. Sorry about that. That's my home phone. Somebody decided to call me. Anyway, so um, so here um, we don't have any any additional tools uh, in the left-hand navigation. So in order to use the uh, Quizlet tool and the Khan Academy tool, what I have to do first is start by creating a page that has content on it. So if I click this little Add button and select that I want to add a content page, and I'm going to call this my con and Quizlet page and add that. So this, this add content uh, function in Canvas is very much like the add text function in Lesson Builder. Uh, what it also really is, though, is it just is a page that can be edited using Canvas's rich text editor. Um, and here's where I kind of see Canvas having a great advantage over Sakai in terms of the way that it's behaving with some of these LTI tools. Look up here um, in, well, you probably can't see because it's so small, but up at the top of the, uh, of the rich text editor in Canvas, there is now a link to the 
Khan Academy LTI tool. So here's what the user can do. They can click on the link to the Khan Academy tool. And now I'm sitting here hanging out in Khan Academy. I can browse through whatever I want to browse through and find eventually some videos. So when I find the video that I want, I can click this cute little embed button and guess what Canvas does for me? It helpfully just embeds that uh, Khan Academy video. So now I have a page, a content page that's got a Khan Academy video uh, embedded on it. I could do the same thing with uh, the Quizlet tool. It looks a little bit different when I get to it, but it's pretty easy to use. So if I um, go back to my rich text editor in Canvas, as you can see, I've got this little external tools drop down and I can embed content from Quizlet, Flickr, Public resources, Khan Academy, and also there's a Dropbox button as well. And that's because as an instructor, before I, before I even started uh, this uh, presentation, I added all of those tools as LTI tools to my Canvas course. So that causes the rich text editor to behave in a very friendly way for me as the instructor. And now I get to do fun and interesting things because I've added these tools to my course. So let's say I want to look for a math quiz. I can type in math in this Quizlet search uh, box and find some math quiz and embed that math quiz. And I haven't left Canvas. So I know that it is probably true for most of these external tools that an instructor could go to the actual external website, find the thing that they want to embed, figure out what the embed code is, and or if there isn't any embed code, figure out how to embed it anyway um, into their Sakai course and use the source function in the Sakai Rich Text Editor to embed that content. But just describing that process can, I think, cause some instructors to go, yeah, so no, I'm totally not interested in doing any of that. Um, but I think this, the way that Canvas deals with uh, all of this external content and having it magically embed into their content pages is a really smart way of doing things. Now, let's see what happens when I try to add those same tools into my Sakai course. So I'm going to go back to Lesson Cloud, and I'll use my Site Editor function, and I'll use my Edit Tools function. And now I'm going to go click on Quizlet, and what was the other thing? Oh, I guess I don't have Khan Academy. Oh, right. I was <laughs> debating between Khan Academy and TED videos. We'll just use TED videos and pretend it's Khan Academy. So here's what happens. Um, I add these tools to my course, and now those tools appear in my left-hand navigation area of my Sakai course. So now I'm going to go to the Quizlet tool, and guess what? I see this really cool search function, and I can search for math, just like I was doing in Canvas. And I can find uh, some math uh, tests or practices or whatever the heck this thing is that Quizlet does. Uh, and now... I'm given this option to embed, and then I get yelled at. And the system says, sorry, uh, this system doesn't support whatever it is you're trying to do, but here you go, have some code, and go ahead and try and copy and paste that code. Uh, well, I don't know where, somewhere. So really the only place in Sakai where you can copy and paste this code is within the rich text editor. Um, fortunately, that rich text editor exists pretty much everywhere. So I have to now kind of figure out where I want to put that Quizlet and then maybe go to this add content function in lesson pages and then click on the source and then see if I get yelled at. Um, I do get yelled at a little bit uh, by Sakai, but that's okay. The content still does embed for me. Um, but that process that I went through uh, in Sakai uh, took quite a bit longer than it did in Canvas. And I think the same thing is true uh, when you're searching for and trying to embed videos from either Khan Academy or, or TED. Um, if I wanted to embed this TED video, I would have to then, I mean, first get yelled at. This thing tells me I'm not in a system that supports this content. Uh, so now I have to go, you know, figure out how to copy and paste this long chunk of uh, uh code, at least that's what it looks like from an instructor's perspective, uh, into a rich text editor that's using the source function. So um, I guess my 
my point here with this uh, discussion and wanting to have this discussion is, um, well, I'll get to the, <laughs> that last minute add to my presentation in a second, is, um, you know, would it be worth it to cause Sakai's rich text editor or or some other tool in Sakai to behave in a way uh, with these tools that are used for content embedding uh, in the in a way that that Canvas does. So, I mean, if we go back to this page where we can see the list of all of the apps that are uh, available for LTI integration with any system that's LTI compliant, this is a heck of a lot of apps. And from what I could tell, you know, well, first of all, some of these uh, an institution has to pay for, and some of these are free. And a lot of the free ones, most of the free ones, in fact, are tools that provide embeddable content. And so wouldn't it be nice to say, um, here, you can use content from any of these tools in Sakai. Now, that would, of course, uh, probably cause uh, schools to to maybe add more available LTI tools to their list than the four that you see here, uh, but that could cause our our tools list to be quite long and just as lengthy, I think, as as uh, the Canvas tool set. Uh, so that was kind of all I had in terms of kind of showing you guys what the differences are between the way. Canvas and Sakai handle these LTI tools that's, that's, that are specific to um, embedding content on pages. Um, and then I, <laughs> I came up with this last minute thing. This, this, this was not on the abstract for the presentation, but um, I got a little bit bunched up at Canvas because uh, they seem to be claiming to be SCORM compliant. And in fact, when you search online for Canvas and SCORM, uh, the first site that pops up is a site that gives you instructions on how to importing and how to import SCORM objects into Canvas. Um, and so they've just taken a different approach um, than the Sakai community has about SCORM content. First of all, I should share with you guys that SCORM can play all on its own. Um, it's basically just a collection of files inside of a zip file. And as long as you unzip that file and figure out where the start file is for that SCORM content, uh, you can play it from any LMS. Uh, and so, so I'm, I was just, I was kind of um, subdued by <laughs> Canvas's reaction to, to these questions about importing SCORM objects because really, um, really their capabilities are the same as Sakai's. Uh, so anything that you can do in terms of SCORM in Canvas, you can do in Sakai without a SCORM player even. Um, and that's actually the topic of my, uh, the, the public webinar that I'm gonna be giving um, in a couple of weeks. So I'm gonna stop there on the SCORM thing. I just wanted to tell everybody that you can still play SCORM in Sakai without a SCORM player. Uh, so I think at this point, I am gonna to toggle back over to the PowerPoint and uh, kind of open things up for discussion. Now that I've uh, finished my, I guess it was kind of a rant uh, about Canvas <laughs> and and Sakai's rich text editor. Um, I'd like to to see if anyone has has something to say or wants to discuss uh, Canvas or Sakai and maybe how Sakai could behave better uh, with these tools that are designed to just embed cool content. Uh, so I'm going to toggle back over to our big blue button session and see if I can figure out how to stop sharing. No, I guess I don't need to stop sharing. Um, all right. So, yes, why don't I open this up for discussion? Does anyone have anything to say or can anyone say anything? Are you guys on the mic right now or can anyone still hear me? <laughs> Well, they, um, Kara, I can, I can comment a little bit on that, <clears throat> on your, uh, your concern and that, that, uh, where the rich text editor is in, in structure or in canvas, mm -hmm. that was actually a custom, um, extension to LTI that in structure developed and they worked with a lot of these sites to get it. So it works with them. So mm -hmm. it wasn't something that, L that uh, IMS uh, knew about or came up with. It was something that Structure came up with. And then just like a couple months ago, they, they contributed it back. They wrote the spec, contributed it back to IMS, mm -hmm. and it's available for LTI 2.0. But it's kind of new, so like things like Sakai and uh, Blackboard haven't actually implemented it yet. Mm -hmm. So um, it, I, I, 
we we put out a list of like the things where people could vote. Like the funding from this conference is going to go to vote for new features, things that could be developed. Eventually, this will be developed in Sakai. But if you want to see it developed sooner than later, you know you could have voted for LTI integration with a rich text editor, which is what you're talking about, where you would see. You know, you would see this, these TED Talks or the Khan Academy. You would see the buttons. You would see parity with Canvas uh, actually implementing the uh, extension that you're seeing. And that, that uh, it's, it's something we know about. You know, I, I've seen for a while. And I, would, I would also love to see it. Just not something that, you know, it's, you can do in a day. It would take at least, you know, it would take some time to get that plugin written and get the, uh, the code written for LTI to, to allow that, that pass through to happen. But it, it definitely is, is, would make it really great. It's something you don't want to have to pass the embed code. I completely agree. So. Cool. Thanks for that. Um, can folks still vote? I do remember voting for that very thing. But um, is voting still open or is it closed at this point? I, I don't know if it was open. I know there was there was a, a week ago there was a round, no, another round. There was an initial round of voting. I think there was another round of voting. And um, I don't know. Okay. I know I voted once, and then I don't even remember how I had that opportunity. <laughs> I don't know how I got there, but I do remember voting. Um, I'm seeing uh, some chatter in the chat. So, yeah, um, and that girl said that Canvas uses Tiny MCE and uh, Sakai uses CK Editor, and so that's they wrote the plugin for Tiny MC. We would have to write the one for CK Editor, and we'd also have to write it for um, Sakai's LTI. They have their own LTI, so... That's you know it's a little little different, so that's okay. definitely we want to get parity with them. Um, yeah, I did notice um, Brian Whitmer's name on like pretty much all of those tools as the author. So well, in structure hosts that edu app center mm -hmm. and, and the code for that and the code for that is available. So like you know if you wanted to ho you know get a, a server and host edu app center, you could do that and you could add your own. LTI tools and you could have your own links or whatever, but right now, Brian and Instructure host that website and um, for the community, but the source code is open for that uh, EDU Web Center. Oh, yeah. I used theirs, in fact, mm -hmm. to link to like TitanPad and whatever else. I, I mean, the that sort of first category of LTI tool, like it just works with Sakai, even though some of these are, some of them even have like a like canvas in their um, launch URL, but they still work in Sakai. So um, that was kind of nice. Link through. Uh, what's Dave, uh, are there any sessions or articles on LTI usage paired with online teaching practices? I, well, I know um, Chuck Severance has done a bunch of presentations on LTI, and I know that some of those presentations have been technical, but some have been, um, you know, specifically for faculty members. Um, whether they've been recorded, I, I can't say, but um, uh, mm -hmm. I know that he's shared uh, shared some things about that. Um, I also know that um, the Asahi Net folks did a webinar on LTI a couple of months ago, and that's a record. I think that was a recorded webinar as well, and that's available at their website somewhere. <laughs> if you, if somebody wants uh, me to provide a link to um, to some of those articles, then feel free to email me and just let me know. Um, do you have any recommendations on tools good good to use in courses uh, for teaching? Is a question. Um, you know, I don't actually have much experience with um, using the LTI tools themselves. My experience just has been figuring out how to get them to work in Sakai and or figuring out how they don't work in Sakai. So I'm, I'm afraid I don't have a lot to say about that. The specific tools. I know that, like, uh, we, we have been looking at, like, you know, uh, wikis, like uh, you, you mentioned wiki here for um, – the uh, XWiki has an LTI component. I think MediaWiki does too. Uh, TitanPad could be used as a wiki wiki replacement. You know, you could link link Titan pads to each other, and you know, link. It's just based on Etherpad, so you can link like different pads to each other, kind of make a wiki out of it. So, um, you know, though you could probably make that out of uh, LTI tools out of that, but nothing that's. Yeah. I think uh, I don't think XWiki or Wiki Media Media Wiki was on the list, but I don't know if you can. You have to. Um, when, 
their server wouldn't make a good one for their private institution. You have to set a media wiki. I've also seen a lot of schools using uh, something called Piazza. Mm, no yeah, idea yeah. what that is, but um, the instructors and students seem to like it. There's a system called VoiceThread that um, some of my clients are using. And then uh, it's also true now that you can uh, create your own individual SCORM Cloud account with Rustici SCORM Cloud, and you can integrate that via LTI with your course, uh, and that kind of gets around some of the limitations of the uh, Rustici SCORM Cloud integration that's, um, that's in Contrib, I think, uh, because that has some real limitations in terms of, like, well, basically it doesn't allow individual instructors to have their own accounts so much as requiring an institution account, and that can be pretty expensive. So uh, SCORM Cloud is used I think sometimes for LTI as well. And on and like on that EDU App Center, if you have like uh, questions about like what's a good wiki, there's like the, there is a filter, there's a category filter on that that can kind of maybe see, kind of help you see like what are um, you know different categories, like what are good assessment tools, what are good math tools. I, I think that's a good place to kind of link off and see what things might be good. So a lot of these you know might be. Uh, things you have to pay for, like Kara said, she likes to look for the free stuff, but some of them are probably good, um, uh, you know, commercial apps, um, and some of them are good uh, um, apps. They're, they're apps you might have to host your own instance of and uh, somewhere, like to get your own private version of uh, like a wiki or something. But I think that there, there was a wiki there that, it allows you to like make your own wiki without having to you know, get your own server or whatever. Wiki spaces maybe wiki spaces private label is on that list and that I think you, that's a paid service, but you can get your own wiki there. Cool. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like most folks seem to be in listen only mode and I think that's fine. So if anyone has something to say, of course, yeah. feel free to uh, yeah, I, enter it into the chat. I can unmute somebody. You can enter something in the chat. <laughs> Are there any other LTI tools not on Edu apps? There might be. Um, if if you have a specific system that you enjoy using and you're just wondering if it's, you know, um, an LTI provider or producer, then uh, you can just either Google it or contact that company. Like, um, I've got a little bit of a beef with Adobe Connect right now because I cannot get them to answer whether uh, they can be connected to an LMS via LTI. And they keep talking about, you know, the big expensive integration, but um, they haven't really answered my question. So uh, good luck. <laughs> you can always ask. Yeah, there might be some commercial tools that aren't there. Like I linked to, I put the IMS Global uh, catalog. These are the ones that actually get certified by IMS Global as being LTI compliant. Um, I think the ones on EDU apps might be kind of, a lot of them there might not be good and a lot of them might not work right. A lot of them might just be just experimental things. Like they have like a place kit in there. And I think that's just like a test app that, that um, Brian probably came up with, you know, that's just kind of a fun thing. It's not something you're going to want to put in your course, but. Um, someone asked uh, how it was sent via private message, but it, uh, somebody asked, how do you actually connect these LTI tools to Sakai. Um, so I'm going to show that. Uh, it was, they were asking specifically about Titan Pad, so I'll show you who eventually figured it out. Um, there's, here's Titan Pad. So on the Edu App Center site, if you click on the name of a tool that uh, you'd like to configure in your Sakai implementation, um, I think depending on uh, which version of Sakai you're using and whether you're using LTI2 or not, um, there's a configuration URL. Uh, since my instance of Sakai is not um, using, is it LTI2? Yeah, LTI, it's not using LTI2 yet. So um, what I had to yeah. do was just you don't figure. Anymore, Kara. 
Oh, sorry. I thought I was demoing something. Okay, hold on. Let me um let me reshare that. Thank you for telling me. And this takes a minute or so, I think, to share. Okay, I think it's sharing. Yeah. There it okay. Goes. All right, so let me go, let me start over. <laughs> so on the Edu App Center site, and there's also like another site that Canvas also hosts that looks pretty similar to this, but um, I don't really know why there are two, but there are. Uh, anyhow, if you, if you get to any of these Edu App sites and click on the tool that you'd like to connect to Sakai, um, there is on uh, the sort of uh, description page for that tool is a description, and then there's a configuration URL. And this URL um, works if you're using LTI 2. If you're not, then what you have to do is figure out um, what the launch URL is for that particular tool and whether um, there's like an app ID or secret key or other configuration values that are required. So, um, this is how you do it. You figure out what the launch URL is, and this tool I happen to know does not require uh, an, where is it? It doesn't require any sort of specific password or secret key, so you can just type anything in the secret key box. So then uh, when you go to Sakai, and um, if you're an admin, you can do this from the admin workspace or anywhere else, really. Uh, if you go to external tools and Go to tools available in the system, and you can add LTI tool. This is this is a Sakai 10 uh, interface. Before you might see something a little different, but yeah. Yep. So, um, and then you paste the launch URL into the launch URL field, and if it is indeed a free app, you typically, or if, uh, yeah, if it's indeed free to use, then you. You shouldn't need any specific launch key or secret. You can just type in whatever you want. So I just type like ASDF. And then um, I usually, I don't click that. Um, I just kind of make some decisions about these privacy settings and services. And then that's kind of it. And now we have Titan Pad 1. So if I go back to my site editor, and go to edit tools, there's Titan Pad 1, and I'm logged in as an admin on my Sakai instance, and so um, I th I'm pretty sure this is now available to any user uh, in this Sakai instance, because I've added it here. So now we've got this Titan Pad 1 tool, and that's it. Yeah, but prior to 10, you have to make an XML file and add that all the information to it. It was a little more work, like in 2.9. <laughs> And um, but now you can do it through that admin interface. I think individual instructors can do it too on their site info. Okay, I guess I should come back to the conference and see if there are any other questions. The question: If you use a Quizlet in the Canvas uh, test results, are they integrated in the gradebook? Um, are there any LTI quizzes possible to use in Sakai? Um, I don't think Quizlet will ever integrate with any gradebook because it's a pretty light tool. Um, but the um, the LTI tools that the users actually have to click on to experience uh, can integrate with um, Sakai grades and Canvas grades. I, and I don't know which ones actually do. Um, Except, well, I know VoiceThread does. You can give grades in VoiceThread, and those can find their way into Sakai. You can give grades, oh, you can give grades in SCORM Cloud, too, and those will find their way into Sakai. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing they probably um, work in Canvas as well. Well, it looks like someone's, someone's going to go ahead and implement TitanPad right now. That's great <laughs> on your Sakai instance. Very good. 
Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we've got about two minutes left. So if anyone's got anything left to say, uh, feel free to enter that into the chat or ask Matt to unmute you. I'm sure he's happy to do that. Um, otherwise, um, feel free to come to the uh, SCORM presentation that I'm giving on December 4th. You can find information on that at uh, BrutusPartners.com. And, um, well, thank you for coming and listening to my uh, – well, it was kind of a presentation, but also sort of a rant and discussion all at the same time. So thanks, you guys. It was, it was really good. I hope by the next time you do it, you give it that feature that you wanted will be implemented. <laughs> I hope next time I do this, I'll be giving a training on how to do it. Yep. All right. Well, I think we're done. So, look, we finished a whole minute early. Good work, everybody. Thank you. And um yeah, we'll see uh we'll see everybody later. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>